you will wait uh, you know, a 30 minute, 40 minute, sometimes an hour for the guy. And if he just can't finish, we just end the scene with some fake cops. Hi, I'm Sylvia Sage. Welcome back to another episode of Sexy, Funny, Raw. And this week I'm going to be answering your questions about the adult industry. So let's begin. This first question is one I get a lot, and I'm not quite sure why you're asking me and not a male performer, but the people wanna know, do men use enhancements before performing in a scene, i.e. Viagra or some other source of medication? And I will say, for the most part, yeah. Not because they necessarily need it, I would say, but because it will help the scene along. There's a lot of stopping and starting, an adult, so there's a lot of times where they'll have to constantly uh, regain a hard on. So having something that just keeps it at a good standing point is definitely helpful to keep the day moving and to just get through the scene. So yeah, sometimes there's help, but it's not always Viagra. There's different forms of things that all the guys use. So yeah. Really been hardest on me. I'm rattling on, but if you don't vent your emotions, they just well up inside you and burst out. The harder you try, the harder it all gets. Somebody else wanted to know, is it exhausting being an adult film actress? Um, yeah, it's mentally and physically exhausting being an adult film actress. Um, I would say mentally more than anything, just because people are always trying to tear you down, trying to tell you what is wrong with your physical body, maybe what is wrong with your personality, or even the way you have sex. Um, it's a very fan-driven business, and so we're constantly listening to our fans, but they're not always so nice. So yeah, it's exhausting trying to remind myself that, wait, I love me, fuck everybody else. <laughs> How is the pay? Is it a fixed rate for all performers? No, um, it is not a fixed rate. Performers kind of base their own salary. Now there is a starting wage, which we kind of all start out at when you're getting into the industry. They tell you this is a, a baseline rate, if you will, for um, X amount of things. And everything that you do has a different money rate to it. Say it's just oral pays one thing, or if it's just vaginal pays another, or if we're going the back door, it goes up. <laughs> so everything pays differently. The number of partners that you have per scene pay differently. Everything pays differently. Um, yes, there is a starting rate, but once you get going and you establish some sort of pull um, with the companies that they necessarily need you, need your name, then you can raise your rates. But could you pay me in advance? Are you serious? Is it hard having a romantic relationship outside of the industry? Uh, for me, yeah, it's very hard. Uh, there are some people who have found some success in it, um, but there's not a lot. I find that most performers date within the industry because we really kind of understand what that means and what a relationship means um, while working. So a lot of people have a hard time separating the work from real life. Um, but when you're an adult performer, the work is work and we all know that. So it's much easier to date somebody who has experienced the same things that you have, but I haven't dated anybody in or out. So it's not going well. <laughs> I've got the perfect girl for you. Janice, I apologize to you if I don't seem real eager to jump into a forced, awkward, intimate situation that people like to call dating. I don't like the feeling. You're sitting there, you're wondering, do I have food on my face? Am I eating? Am I talking too much? Are they talking enough? Am I interested? I'm not really interested. Should I play like I'm interested, but I'm not that interested, but I think she might be interested, but do I want to be interested, but now she's not interested? Is the adult industry declining because of OnlyFans? A little bit? I would say probably yes. <laughs> Now that the performers kind of have more financial power and don't necessarily need to be working for companies, um, 
it's definitely shifted things in the adult industry. Performers are getting paid more, uh, they're doing a lot less work, and directors are being a lot nicer to them when they do get to set. So for me, it's been a great positive change. <laughs> This next question is one that I think kind of foretells on a question earlier, but the question is, is it hard to form relationships with people outside of the industry? And I saw this as not necessarily dating, but I saw this as like maintaining any kind of relationship outside the adult industry. And I will also say yes to this question. A lot of my friends are um, other adult performers or um, comedians, mainly because it's really hard for me to relate to people who work a nine to five or you know work in a school setting or something like that because we just don't have the same mentality i guess you would say i live a very free life and i think sometimes it's hard for people to kind of grasp um, the lifestyle that we live um, and kind of look down on it and uh, so yeah it's hard to maintain any relationship with somebody who, who hasn't actually been in my shoes i've isolated the algorithm for making friends <laughs> sheldon there is no algorithm for making friends well, well, hear him out if he's really onto something we could open a booth at comic-con make a fortune <laughs> i love this next question so when we see come is it real or is it fake and the same with squirt um, I would say with Squirt, it's almost always real. Um, it's like impossible to uh, fake that. So sh that girl has to be drinking a ton of water or a ton of Pedialyte that day in order to make that actually happen, but it's real. <laughs> as far as cum, I would say it is 50-50. <laughs> sometimes it's going to be uh, real and sometimes it's not. Sometimes the guy just can't get off on the end of the scene so we'll have to do a fake cum shot. Um, at the end of the day when everyone is just mentally dead, you will wait uh, you know, a 30 minute, 40 minute, sometimes an hour for the guy. And if he just can't finish, we just end the scene with some fake cum. So I wouldn't even say 50-50. I'd say 90% of the time you're seeing real and 10% you're seeing something a little fake. You do your back? Only if you promise to do my front first. Gladly. Oh, whoops. That never usually happens. Really, it happens to me all the time. When will you ever work for Vixen or Black? Um, that is a great question. I've been trying to work for these companies uh, since I started. Uh, they just don't hire me. So I think you guys need to reach out to them and just be constantly berating them until you get Sylvia Sage on one of those. <laughs> movie screens um, because they pick the talent. Uh, I have reached out to them a few times and expressed my interest and they're just not interested in me. I think it's my very small tushy, so who knows. I love this question too. After a scene, is there a lot of like aches and pains and when can you have sex again? There are definitely a lot of aches and pains. Um, my lower back hurts from the um, arching that you have to do, especially me because I'm trying to make my no ass look like some sort of ass. Um, and you're doing a lot of um, like squats and things. So it's really a workout and it's not just like a 30 minute session. I mean, this is a prolonged thing that's happening sometimes for hours. So it's like coming off of a very intense workout. So yeah, I'm absolutely tired. And as far as having sex after, I mean, as soon as I take a shower, I think I'm good to go again, maybe? I don't know, it just depends on the day. <laughs> this question cracked me up. How does the HR department work considering what you do? Well, <laughs> there really isn't one, unfortunately so. Uh, no one to really complain to if you have a problem, except for maybe Twitter. Uh, a lot of uh, talent tends to complain on Twitter. Um, I will say our HR department is what we really try to like stop things before they start. So before you do any kind of scene, there's always a lot of paperwork and it's a do and don't list. And you sit down with your partner and you sit down with the director and you make sure that everybody's on the same page of what you're comfortable with. And hopefully nobody steps over those lines. So our HR is more like a prerequisite. 
and then afterwards you're just kind of on your own. <laughs> when talking to a coworker in the office, where should you keep your penis? <laughs> Excuse me? Just point on the doll where your penis should be. And remember, there's no wrong answers here, just super wrong answers. I, I, would, I would say probably you would keep it in your pants. Yes, exactly. Your penis never needs to be out of your pants at work. And last but not least, let's finish with the real questions. What is the worst part about working in the adult industry? Hands down, it's the mean ass fans. Uh, it's the people who are just so downright rude. Uh, that is the worst part. People think that once you're an adult actress that you somehow lose your humanity aspect of you and that you're no longer a person and that all bets are off and people are allowed to say or do well, yeah, people think they are allowed to do anything to me. Um, that I'm just this creature who has subjected herself to um, sex and I should just be available to everyone to destroy. Um, and that's just not the case. Uh, porn stars are people too. Uh, so <laughs> we definitely are still humans and I wish more of society would treat us as such. So at the end of the day, by God, that is the hardest part of being a porn star. And I guess if you can handle it, then you can handle being a porn star. But it is not for everyone. But you know what? It is for me, and I've had a great ride. I could not be more thankful for what the adult industry has provided me and my life. And to that, that wraps up this episode of Sexy Funny Raw. So until next time, guys, adios.